everyone, Jeremy Blum here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Inventables X-Carve CNC mill. I'll be showing you how it goes together and talk a little bit about what I like, what I don't like, um, and some of the things that you can do with this pretty awesome do-it-yourself CNC machine. Once the machine is assembled, it's time to set it up using Inventable's Easel software. It's pretty easy to use. Basically, you connect the device to your computer, install some helper software that allows it to talk to it over the COM port, and then you run through a couple tests, including testing your wiring by jogging the X, Y, and Z stages back and forth, and, and making sure that the computer can talk to your X-Carve machine. Uh, the X-Carve machine basically just has an Arduino and a shield on it, controls the motors, which talks back to the computer. If you got a DC spindle, you can control it on and off using the power supply, and you can also optionally have limit switches in your device that you can um, test out in the setup process. Uh, the machine goes to the limits of the X and Y and Z axis to test out the limit switches and make sure that they properly detect when the machine is at the extent of its movements. Once you actually start cutting, the end stops can be used to home the machine X and Y, and then in the Z, you have to move the machine manually up and down to find the surface of the material. Easel is really easy to use, and by default, it'll load up a um, test carve that you can use to test out your machine. It'll load up your name and a simple picture. You can choose the type of wood you want, choose the depth of your cut, set the bit size pretty easily, uh, and control a bunch of other things. One nice feature of Easel is that it will tell you if your bit size is too large for some of the features that you're trying to cut and that it might not be able to resolve them. I had already made a cut that I uploaded. There's a lot of nice apps that plug in, for example, one that allows you to upload an SVG file and it automatically vectorized it. That's what I did with my Blum Ideas Lab logo. I uploaded it to make this sample cut. You'll measure the material. Make sure you actually measure it because that's usually not exactly the width that it says. Choose your bit size, clamp it down with the included clamps. Then you move your XY carriage to the home position on the bottom left-hand corner of your piece. And then you have to manually jog the Z up and down until it's just above the top of your workpiece. Once that's set, you'll raise the bit, turn on the spindle, confirm that the spindle is on, 
and the machine will start carving. Keep in mind, the computer has to stay connected to the machine while it's carving because it's sending the commands to it live over that COM port interface that I mentioned earlier. And now the machine will start carving away. Depending on the bit you use, uh, you, should, you should expect to get quite a bit of debris. Um, there are options to connect a vacuum to the machine, although none of them are really fleshed out by Inventables itself. They suggest uh, there's a couple of mounting points in the spindle mount where you could conceivably attach a vacuum. I think that would be a really good idea. This machine is really loud. I definitely think it depends on what kind of spindle you have. I opted for the 24 volt DC spindle uh, and it makes a lot of noise. There's a lot of bit chatter as it moves back and forth. Um, pushing the bit further up into the spindle helped a little bit, but not really that much. Um, and that's even with doing relatively shallow passes. You can see that the resolution of the cut though is quite good. It came out pretty nice. Some of the very small details like the islands and the B and the A kind of got clipped out even though it should have been able to resolve them. They just kind of got yanked out. Overall, the machine is pretty nice and a great starter kit for someone who wants to get started with carving. My primary issue with the machine is that the electronics feel like a bit of an afterthought. It's basically just an Arduino with an off-the-shelf shield mounted on top of it uh, and a fan. And they did make a nice little aluminum enclosure that attaches it to the external AC-DC power supply. But all this feels like a little bit of an afterthought. There's no easy way to attach it to the machine and that can make moving it around very difficult. Since I have the smaller of the machines, the 500 by 500 millimeter version, I did want to be able to potentially move it around, and that gets hard when the power supply is kind of just dangling off the sides. The mechanical construction of the machine, though, is really, really nice. They've made a lot of improvements since the Shapeoko 2, and the rails for the cables make a huge improvement in cable management. One problem I do still have with the cables, though, is I really wish that they were connectorized instead of using terminal blocks. The terminal blocks feel kind of messy, uh, and I feel like overall the wiring on the machine could have been made a lot cleaner by doing connectorized custom cables. The end stops all get soldered to wires directly on the machine, and this also feels like a little bit of an afterthought to me. Certainly it is an add-on to the machine, and soldering the wires on isn't very difficult, uh, but I feel like it would have been a lot better if they were just mounted on a very simple PCB and had connectorized cables attaching them to the main electronics. I used the 24 volt DC spindle, which works pretty well. Definitely if you want to do something heavier duty, it would make more sense to get one of the AC spindles, basically a DeWalt router that you mount into the machine or a router from another company. Um, I definitely did notice a lot of bit chatter on the DC spindle. It's relatively small and the software can control its on off and its speed, which is a nice addition that you can't really do with the AC spindles. But I definitely did have some concerns about how much it kind of vibrated around. That being said, the cuts that I did do with it turned out quite well. Not perfect. The bit moved around a little bit and you can see some kind of jagged edges in a few places, but overall the, the quality of the cuts look pretty good and I've been quite happy with it so far. The price point makes it worthwhile and it's quite customizable if you want to upgrade it or adjust it as you go. For someone who's new to carving and wants to get started using a CNC mill, the X-Carve is a great option and easel help makes it even better by making it really easy to get designs made for the X-Carve. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them to me on Twitter. That's the quickest way to get in contact with me. I'm at SciGuy14. Thanks a lot.